So please, if you are welcome, our prophet Catherine Sykes, please stand to your feet. Yes, Lord, yes, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you, God, for what you're doing in our lives through directing our paths, directing our feet, giving us the assignments that bring us to the fullness of what you've called us to be and do. So, Holy Spirit, we just ask that you would bring a spirit of revelation that every heart would be open to receive what it is that you have for them tonight. We thank you for that, Father. We thank you that you are good all the time. We bless you, we love you, we exalt you in this place. And we give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you, Mario. Well, I want to just elaborate for just a moment on a couple of the items that were up on the announcements and also to give some information to our online audience that may not be aware. Um, first of all, tomorrow we are having the charge here at the Life Center. And the charge is our introductory school of prophetic training. The purpose of the charge is to activate you in uh, hearing and discerning the voice of the Lord. It doesn't matter what level you currently possess in terms of your ability to hear him. Uh, the Lord will raise you up to a new level in being able to discern. So the class is open. Uh, Walk-in registration is available, will be available tomorrow. The class is from uh, 10 to 5. So if you are desiring to be able to hear more, to hear more clearly, to discern, is that me or is it God? Is that me or is it God? which is what we hear a lot, then, um, then you'll want to be here tomorrow uh, at the Life Center in Sandy Springs, Georgia. The other thing I wanted to uh, bring up is about our prophetic presbytery. And this is, is directed to those of you who are currently online. Many of you don't realize that we have now opened our services back up. We are having live services and our teams are ministering prophetically every Friday night. But next week, uh, on the second and the third Fridays of the month, we have what is called Prophetic Presbytery. And what that is, is that means that if you come between 6 and 7.30, you can sign up to receive a personal ministry, personal prophecy by a team of prophetic ministers. And um, it's on a first come first serve basis, but even if you miss the uh, sign up and or the, or the rooms are full by the time you get here, we will have a team in the sanctuary that will be ministering to the people that uh, attend. So we wanna make sure that everybody is aware of that. Also, um, you can, if you are online and you cannot be here, you live outside the metro area uh, or are unable to travel for whatever reason, you can um, make a call to Life Center and we have virtual teams that minister also on the second and third Friday. So for those of you who are in other states or even in other nations, um, if you can contact us and call that number at 770-399-0660 and it'll give you instructions when you call, uh, leave your information on the Presbytery line and we can get you signed up for virtual prophetic Presbytery. So. 
Uh, I wanted to make sure that everyone was aware of that because it's time to hear the word of the Lord. Amen? I don't think there's any of us who are not desiring to hear what God is saying to us or what he has to say to us during this time. And the message that I have tonight, and it's more of a teaching, but the message that I have is really in alignment with that. Uh, because I, I was talking to someone today, uh, this week that was frustrated in the assignment that God had given them. How many of you have ever been frustrated with where you are? Amen. Sometimes it's because we don't understand. Uh, but I want to talk tonight about purpose, calling, and assignment. Because as we begin to understand what God is doing in us, and we can see biblically how it has played out, it gives us more grace for the race, amen? And we can all use more grace for the race. So, first of all, let's establish, we know this, God is a covenant God. Everything God does in our lives is based upon covenant and the covenant that was established with us through the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible is a covenant book. It's full, full of covenant promises. Every one of them is tied to the covenant that God has established with us. The purpose for which you were created is something that is established biblically, um, but we need to understand what is purpose. And the purpose or purpose is the reason for which something is done, created, or for which something exists. And I love what our Dr. Mary Crum has to say about purpose. She says, you are a who who does a what for a why. And God created every person that is living and breathing and has ever lived and breathed God has created you for a purpose. Jesus had a purpose. Uh, he came to redeem us. But in 1 John 1, 3, 8, it says, For this purpose the Son of Man was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Now, he did that on the cross, and he continued to do that. He came to redeem us but he had to destroy the works of the enemy in order to do that, right? He had to sacrifice himself, take on the sin, which is a work of the enemy in our lives. We allow it and have allowed it uh, when we have sin in our lives. But, uh, so we have a responsibility to repent, but he paid the price and to destroy the works and the fruit of that in our lives. We know that, that God knew us in our mother's womb. Uh, Romans 8.29 says, For those whom he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. So we are to look like Jesus. We are to be conformed into the image of Jesus Christ. And in Ephesians 2.20, it says, We are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So that word workmanship means that we are designed and molded by God for a purpose. You were made to make a contribution. You were made to make an impact. You were designed and molded by God to make a difference in this generation. God ordained the day of your birth. He ordained the days of your life. And every one of them is filled with his purpose or the opportunity to fulfill his purpose. Now, how we live is much more important than how long we live. 
You see, because as we fulfill our purpose, as we walk our days and allow God to lead and guide us through the, the, this journey called life, what we do in the time that has been given us is to make an impact for God's kingdom. That is our greatest and highest calling, to be conformed into the image of Christ to advance his kingdom. And for that purpose, all of us were born. In the Bible, the word service and ministry are the same word. So how many of you are in full-time ministry? Would you raise your hands? Some of you have been listening to our apostle buddy. How many of you are part-time Christians? <laughs> you see, because in the Bible, servant and minister are the same word, so all of us are called to full-time ministry. You see, it doesn't matter where you are or where your assignment is, um, you don't have to have a title to be in ministry. You don't have to have a pulpit to be in ministry. You are called to full-time ministry for the kingdom of God wherever God has placed you. And we've got to understand that our purpose is tied to that. You just need to be actively doing the works that God has prepared for you to do for the cause of Christ because God has works for you to do. And when you are sold out to him, when you hear his voice, when you are in communion and covenant with him, Psalms 37, 23 tells us that the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord, and he delights in his way. So purpose. We can see purpose. We all are part of God's grand purpose for humankind. But then, so many people are saying, well, what is my calling? Am I a prophet? Am I an evangelist? Am I an apostle? Everybody wants to be an apostle. Used to be everybody wanted to be a prophet when the prophetic move was gone, going on, and everybody wanted to have, you know, be a prophet until they found out what was involved. And now everybody wants to be an apostle until you'll find out what's involved. <laughs> but we don't, we don't choose that to be our calling. God chooses our calling. And those, those callings are, um, are ordained of God. Your calling is what God is calling you to be and do. And God it will um, give you the gifts the abilities and the talents necessary to fulfill the calling that he has in you. So look at what you are gifted to do. Look, I mean, I am an ordained prophet. I did not know I was a prophet for a long time. I didn't know. And it wasn't, I knew I had insights into things. I knew I could see things that I thought everybody could see. I thought it was evident until God developed me into my calling. So let me just say this. Don't worry about what your ultimate call is. Just fulfill each assignment that God gives you and you will see it and fulfill it. You see, because so many times people want to know, am I this or am I that? I need a label, I need a name. And the truth is God isn't interested in your title. He's interested in what he has called you to do and the impact that you're going to make in this generation. 
at the right time, God will reveal the fullness of your calling. So look at your gifts. Look at your gifts both inside the church and outside the church. What is your passion? God will give you a love for the things he's called you to do. When you're developing them, there may be varying degrees of passion. And that depends on your assignment. You see, the way God fulfills your calling and develops your calling is through your assignments. Your assignments may change. Your calling does not. So, so it's not so much of where the ultimate is. It's what are you calling me to do today, God? What is my assignment today? And as you walk day by day with him, fulfilling those assignments as he gives them, you will fulfill your calling and the purpose for which you were created. We don't have to be confused by that. Now, one of the things that is really important to understand is assignments. And it's important because I think that all of us have said at one time or another, I believe God wants me to do this or that. I want you know, to teach a class or to work in marriage ministry or to write a book or to do whatever it is. And that is a good thing. And you may say, well, I know I'm called as a prophet, so I should probably write a book about the prophetic. But the truth is, we, we need to ask the Lord, Lord, is this my assignment? Is that what I'm assigned to do? If, if even when you receive a prophetic word and it says, you're going to write a book, okay, well, Lord, I'm open, I will, when the timing gets close or as you develop in me the message that you want to release through me, I'll be faithful to write it. But you don't have to run out and just put something on paper and go, oh, check that off my list. Do, do you follow me? In other words, it's your journey is personalized by God for you. It is a very intricate plan that he has made for your life. And each assignment has a purpose that develops something in you that prepares you for your calling. And when you fulfill your calling, you fulfill your purpose. So let's look at how this operates. Um, well, let me just make one more statement about assignments. You know, one of the things that the church need, we as the church need to understand is assignments and that every assignment has a time frame. When God puts you in an assignment, it's not until Jesus comes usually speaking, okay? When we accept an assignment that God has given us, there is a time frame on that assignment. So, uh, for example, uh, some people will be asked to be a deacon. Well, a deacon is a good thing. So the, the uh, question to the Lord, Lord, is this my assignment to be a deacon in the church and to serve this church body or the church body I'm uh, assigned to as a deacon. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. I'm going to accept. The next question should be, what is the time frame for this assignment? You see, because many times we take on an assignment and we hold on to it 
for years and years and years. And God, you told me this was my assignment. And I want to do this. I know you're calling me to this. I know you want me to do this and this. But I, I can't let go of that because you called me to it. And see, the truth is, yes, he may have called you to it, but there was a time frame. So if you pray and you ask the Lord, Lord, what is the time frame of this assignment? He says three years. I'm just using that as an example. If he says three years, well, okay, I'm going to give it 110% for the next three years. And when it gets to two years, I'm going to talk to those that I'm serving. I'm going to say, hey, um, remember when I took on this assignment that we set a, a three-year time frame? It's two years. I need to start reproducing somebody. I need to start mentoring somebody. I need to, to help somebody else be raised up to do what I do so that I can do my next assignment. And so as we do that, as we, as we look at time frames and assignments, then it allows the next person that God is raising up to step into the assignment uh, that you are now moving to your next assignment. And the church never misses a beat. So reproduction is an important part of fulfilling an assignment. Or it can be, depending on what that assignment is. So let's, let's look at the life of David. Because I think that his life shows very clearly how walking in his assignment, uh, he learned and accomplished to be who he was called to be. His purpose was to walk in the works that God prepared for him. His calling was to be a prophet king who was a worshiping warrior. And he accomplished this by walking in the assignments that God gave him. First assignment, he started as a shepherd. This was his first assignment. And in this assignment, he learned how to love those he was responsible over. He learned how to be a protector. Uh, he had to protect the sheep from the lion and the bear. He developed courage. And God was teaching him how to fight. He also very likely learned how to worship because shepherds would sing to their flocks at night to quiet them down and to calm them. And I'm sure that this deepened his relationship with the Lord as he spent a lot of time alone out in the wilderness watching over the sheep. And based on what we see in the Bible, we can... Uh, assume that David completed that assignment successfully, learning what God wanted him to learn because he moved to his next assignment. His next assignment was to kill Goliath. And he had been trained at his last assignment to be a protector. But now he was moving to a different level, to the level of warrior. Now, see, all the other Israelites were intimidated. David could have gone along with them, right? I mean, he could have looked at Goliath and been intimidated too. But because he successfully stayed in the first assignment, he didn't back down from the lion. He didn't back down from the bear. He knew the strength and the courage that God built in him, that God could give him the strength to overcome whoever the enemy was. And so his relationship with God was so strong, he didn't give in to the fear that everyone else 
had, was getting into. God had trained him well. So completing this assignment opened the door to David's next assignment. David was an absolute unknown, but the completion of the assignment to kill Goliath brought him to the attention of the king. And God will use your assignments to open doors for you that no one else can open. So his next assignment, third assignment, was to serve the king. And he did that by using his gifts of worship and as a warrior. And in this assignment, he learned the ways of the king's courts. He learned the workings of government. He shadowed the king. And he learned what to do and what not to do. He also learned submission in a way that he could not have learned otherwise. Now, he was very tested in that assignment. Would he stay and serve the king as the Lord wanted him to, or would he jump ship and leave his assignment? You know, Many times when assignments get hard, people jump ship. And they don't complete what God has for them to complete so that they can, they can actually move to the next level because they don't have a long-term conviction that I'm doing what the Lord has asked me to do. I'm on assignment right now. So he was strongly tested. I mean, you know, we know the story. Saul tried to kill David. The Bible says he ran for his life. And remember that Saul had been king and had had the kingdom removed because he suffered from the fear of man. But God was building in David a determination, a determination to serve God and not succumb to the fear of man. Because if David had been living in the fear of man, he would not have been able to fulfill his assignment of serving the king Saul. There is a relationship to the process God has each of us in. David learned to inquire of the Lord. We remember that David would, in times of trouble, in times of, of pressure, in times of, of difficulty, David turned to God as his source. Remember Ziklag, when all had been destroyed, the wives, the children, the spoils had all been taken, and it says that David wept until he could weep no more. He was heartbroken. He was, and it says even his own men threatened to stone him. That's about as low as you can get. Lost everything. But then, it says David inquired of the Lord. And because of that relationship, because of assignment one, assignment two, assignment three, because now he was at that place, because God had built within him what he needed, David knew that when he asked the Lord, the Lord would tell him what to do, how, that whether to pursue or to release and let it go. So he said, God, shall we pursue this troop? Shall we pursue? And the Lord answered mightily, pursue, for you shall surely recover all. And because David had learned what he needed to learn in each assignment, he was able to go and pursue at the word of the Lord and recover all and the spoils of battle. So 
So David stayed and he learned, and he learned that man does not control your destiny, God does. His next assignment was to be king over Judah. And this, was, this came to pass after the death of Saul and the tribe of Judah um, elevated David to rule over them. So David, in this assignment, he was learning how to exercise authority, how to negotiate treaties, how to make alliances. The next assignment, his ultimate assignment, was to be king over all of Israel. It had been prophesied long ago, 38 years from the time that it was prophesied by Samuel to this small shepherd boy, David, the least of his brothers, that he would become king, that God had chosen him to be king. 38 years and many assignments along the way. And his assignment to be king over Israel. Psalm 57, 2, I cry out to the God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose in me. And 1 Chronicles 12, 32, it talks about the sons of Issachar, who understood the times and the seasons and knew what Israel ought to do. The thing about the sons of Issachar that they're talking about in that scripture is the fact that the sons of Issachar understood that God was a covenant God. They understood that God had made promises and that those promises would be fulfilled. And God had promised a king from the tribe of Judah. And Saul was a king from the tribe of Benjamin. So when the war came and the timing came, it says the house of David grew greater and greater and the house of Saul grew smaller and smaller. And they, they, the war came uh, to position David and the sons of Issachar knew what Israel ought to do, which was to come and to gather to support David to crown him as king because now is the time. That's why it says they understood the times and the seasons and what Israel ought to do because they knew God is on our side. God has made a covenant promise that a king would come, a righteous king from the tribe of Judah, and now is the day, now is the hour, and we are to rally to support, to, to help bring this to pass. God will move armies. He will move nations. He will move on the heart of kings to get you what you need to fulfill every good assignment and work that he has called you to do. You don't have to be confused you don't have to say, well, what am I an evangelist? Am I a, well, we're all called to evangelize. We're all called to hear the voice of the Lord as a prophetic people. We are all called to teach and disciple others and lead them to Christ. We are all called to be those that have a ready answer in due season where we can counsel and nurture others through times of wounding and hurt, that pastoral anointing. And we're all called to be kingdom builders, which is that apostolic grace. We're all called. And every one of us has a, a divine invitation to be a key part of what God is doing in this generation. 
The Bible says, despise not small beginnings. We are not, we are not to look at where we are this moment. Because this moment will pass. This situation that we find ourselves in will pass. The key is, Lord, work in me what I need to know and learn and develop so that I can be all you have called me to be and fulfill my calling and every work and purpose for which you establish me. He loves us, and we are to be world changers. Look at somebody and just say, you are a world changer. 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 And God, you may look at it right now and say, but it sure doesn't look like it on, the, on where I am right now. It doesn't matter what it looks like. The truth is the truth. The kingdom of heaven all knows who you are. The kingdom of hell knows all who you are. They know your name. They know you're marked. They know you're established. They know you're called. They know you've got assignment. And they will try and, and thwart your assignment and get you discouraged and looking like I'm not going anywhere. I am sure when David was hiding in that cave that he was thinking, Lord, what did I do wrong? Why, why do you not, do you not favor me any longer? I'm serving the king, but he's trying to kill me. You see, it didn't matter what it looked like. God was interested in the heart of David. He was interested in building in him that strength, that perseverance, the ability to have these skills developed over time. I don't think that David realized when he was a shepherd, well, God is starting me out by training me how to be a good protector. You know, he just walked his day-to-day -day walk thinking I'm doing what I'm supposed to do and what my father told me to do. And then when it came time to kill Goliath, he didn't, he didn't necessarily, I don't think, automatically go, well, this is my big debut as warrior. No, I think that he had such a relationship with God that he became indignant. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine who challenges the people of, of the living God? You see, because he knew God. And he knew God's heart. And David was a man after God's own heart. And if we want to be a people after God's own heart, then we set our hearts on him. And as our hearts are turned on him, as we look to him, the author, the finisher of our faith, God, I don't need a platform. God, I don't need the accolades of man. I don't need the this or that. I don't need to be recognized. I need you. Holy Spirit, I need you. I need you to fill me. I need you to strengthen me. I need you to teach me. I need you to show me. I need you to help me and to co-labor together. Let's advance the kingdom of God together. Let's do it. And as I do that I will be most pleasing to my heavenly father I will be most uh, just uh, just loved I don't think he can love us any more than he does certainly but certainly we can make him smile yeah. purpose we are all 
born into the purpose of being conformed to be like Jesus and to fulfill the works God has called us to, our calling will be made clear as we fulfill our assignments. You will know that you know that you know when you fulfill those assignments and then one day you're at the place that God has ultimately called you to be. Your calling will be fulfilled through your obedience to walk through the process of your assignments. And God will be with you every step of the way, encouraging you, coaching you, giving you what you need. He hasn't taken you out to the desert and left you there. I promise every hair on your head is numbered. Everyone. And he who promised is faithful. He will do what he has said he would do. And he will bring you to the fulfillment of the expected end, which is the fulfillment of your purpose, your call, and your destiny. I just want to invite Mario out right now. And I want to just pray over those that... If this is a time where you say, you know, I know that that is really uh, resonating with my heart, with my spirit, but honestly, I don't know what my assignment is right now. And there are many that may feel that way, that I don't know what I'm called to be doing right now. If that's you, I just want you to slip up your hand just very quickly. Okay, all around the sanctuary, those of you online, this is for you too. I just want to pray for you. So, so just position your heart to receive. Father, I thank you for every man, for every woman listening to the sound of my voice. And Lord, you talked about assignments tonight. And there are many here that are unsure of what their assignment is. But Father, your word says that the path of the righteous shall be bright as the shining sun. And so, Lord, right now, I pray a clearing out of the fog and the confusion. I break every assault of witchcraft, every assignment of hell that is called to darken the path or darken the vision, darken the sight of your children that they might not see the steps before them. Father, we break those assignments now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, right now we speak a breaking into your light. Father, calm their hearts, cause their hearts to be established in you. Let their vision begin to arise. Not just on the circumstances, but Father, up, up, up into the heavens. For Lord, you are our help. You are our guide. You are before us. You are behind us. You are beside us. You are within us. So, Lord, open their eyes to see. I pray, Holy Spirit, a cleansing of their spiritual eyes. 
that they might be able to see. I speak a clearing out of their spiritual ears that they would be able to hear what it is that you would say to them. And Lord, right now, you make the crooked places straight and we call for a straightening of the path that you have them on that they would be able to see and comprehend you as you lead them down this journey. Father, there is no greater thing than loving and trusting you. And I ask that you deposit trust, faith, a knowledge of the security of your love and your covenant. And we pray that as they walk each day, that they will learn to go from assignment to assignment, from faith to faith to glory to glory. And I declare and decree they shall fulfill the ultimate calling and destiny that you have for them. We thank you for that, Father. And Lord, for those that don't know their calling or feel like they're called between two, two ways and they don't, I see many at a fork and a juncture not knowing which way to go. And Father, right now, I ask that you would light the path, that you would show them the direction they should go. Lord, give them a joy at the steps that they take to fulfill the call that you have placed upon their lives. Lord, I thank you that I stand in the presence of kings, queens, and priests unto you. I thank you, Father, that their identity is secure and that just like David, they are being molded and developed to be all that you've called them to be and do. So I pray and I release a grace upon them that the burden would be light, that the journey would be full, that their joy would return, and that you would be glorified in all that they do. I thank you, Father, that the devil trembles when he thinks about who they're called to be, where they're headed, and what you're doing in their lives. I thank you for it, and we give you all the praise and honor. In Jesus' beautiful, magnificent, wonderful, redemptive, cleansing, loving, majestic, sovereign name. And amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I just bless you. I can just feel the love of the Father as he is just ministering to hearts right now. I just, I just feel his, his love, his compassion, but also his determination to get you where you need to be. He's going to do it. Look at somebody say, won't he do it? <laughs> yes, he will. 
I love you. I'm going to turn it over to Eric, who's going to lead us in an opportunity to, to sow for this evening. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Prophet Catherine, for the refocus. Yes. Woo, it's a refocus. <sighs> yes, refocus. Give us this day our daily bread. <laughs> Take, amen. Take one day at a time. <laughs> That's all we have to do. Take one day at a time and be the best we can be on our assignment. And we will finish our destiny. We will reach the expected end. That's so good. Well, it takes all the weight of the world, you know. It just takes all the weight of the world and just say, whew, I don't have to carry all that. I'll just give it to you, Jesus, and I'll just focus on the day. That's all he wants us to do is focus one day at a time. Well, we come to a time where in our service, where we will give you all the opportunity uh, to sow your seeds and to uh, give your, your first fruits of what God has done this week. And uh, for those of you in the sanctuary um, who need an offering envelope, please raise your hands and one of our um, ushers will, will give you an envelope. So please raise your hand and keep it up. And for those of you online, uh, we have several ways to give. Um, you can give via credit card. You can give uh, through Cash App. You can go to lifecenter.org and give. You can text uh, 77977 uh, and put Life Center GA. It's 77977, Life Center GA. And that uh, text will be sent and a link will be sent to you. And um, we have uh, just please take advantage of it. How many know that, that when we sow seed, you want to sow seed into good ground so it produces fruit, so it produces a harvest? And so we just love and we're just excited about this opportunity, what God is doing in your life. So when you sow that seed, make a demand on, uh, on your seed. Place, a, place an assignment. Give your seed an assignment <laughs> and speak over it. Make a declaration and, and watch what God will do for you. So right now, um, if you can, we're going to show you a little video, and uh, we're going to make some declarations. But please, watch this video. Amen. The thing, that we are the thing that we are about to shift into for every single one of us, that was a key that unlocked something that if we would press and make him the priority with everything that we do, we're going to worship ourselves into another place of existence with him. And we will not just live, but we will literally step into a place of abundance, not just financially. I mean abundance in joy. I mean abundance in intimacy in his presence, abundance in wisdom, abundance in knowledge, abundance in understanding, abundance in creativity, abundance on our jobs, abundance in our families, abundance in reconciliation, abundance in everything that is of the kingdom. God is trying to break us into a place where we see abundance that comes out of spending that important time in his presence where he becomes everything. Hallelujah. Let's read it together. We declare that we were made in the image and likeness of God to live an abundant life in him. We choose to put on the mind of Christ and declare that we are full of divine wisdom for innovation, witty inventions, and creative ideas. We free ourselves from every limitation that would keep us from bearing much fruit. We declare favor on our jobs for promotions and advancements, divine increase to our businesses, homes, families, resources, bank accounts, ministry endeavors, and investments. We will purchase property and acquire land debt-free for kingdom purposes. We will have more than enough to live a debt-free life and to be able to bless others out of our overflow. We will demonstrate the kingdom of God everywhere that we go because in Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship team as we give. So, I trust that you all had a chance to give. And so, at this time, we're going to now just pray just a quick blessing over the seed that has been sown, um, even as we make declarations. So, Father, we just thank you, God, that 
uh, you will bless the seed that has been sown. Father, we declare right now that it will bear much fruit. Father God, I pray and declare look over everybody, Lord God, that has given, Lord God. Let them be a thousand times more, even as you spoke in, the, uh, in Deuteronomy, Lord God. I pray that the seed will grow a thousand times more exponentially, Lord God. And may it be a blessing into your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. How many know that... Um, um, one of the greatest things that we can ever do is make a decision for Jesus Christ. When Prophet Catherine, she talked about our callings, she talked about assignments. And one of the things that we have to realize that one of the first callings or in order to fulfill your calling, one of your first assignments is to make a decision to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And so, we're not going to belabor the point, but we're going to get straight to it. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, now is the time. And we're going to give you that opportunity so that you can get on your purpose or get on your way to destiny. Get on the fast track. So, what I want to know is, is there anybody in here who has not accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior? Um, I'm not even going to ask you to raise your hand. But that's going to be between you and God. That's going to be your decision between you and God. And it's all about your personal relationship. It's not about anybody else's. It's not about your family. It's not about your friend. It's not about anyone else. It's about your personal relationship with God. And there's only one way to the Father, and that's through the Son, Jesus Christ. And so, we're going to give you this opportunity. If, if, if that's you... We're going we're gonna to pray. Just pray this prayer after me. It's going to be real simple. So here's the prayer I want you to pray. Say, Father, come into my life. Save me. I receive you now. Father, I ask that you give me your Holy Spirit so that I may live a life pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. If you have prayed that prayer for the first time and you made that confession outwardly and you believed in your heart, you have now been transitioned into eternal life with God through Jesus Christ. And guess what? The angels in heaven are rejoicing and we are too. We're so excited. Amen. Yes. Behold, all things have passed away and all things have become new. This is your day where you get on the fast track to your calling. Amen. So for those individuals who have made that confession for the first time, please send us a message at salvation at lifecenter.org. That's salvation at lifecenter.org. And we would love to get some materials to you and uh, help you with your walk. That's at salvation at lifecenter.org. Amen? Amen. Well, we have come to uh, the end of this uh, portion of ministry. But remember, um, like Prophet Catherine uh, said, that this is our second Friday. And we, um, you know, we do prophetic ministry on second and third Friday. And also, uh, typically after uh, Sunday, Sunday ministry, we typically do it. And uh, every day, excuse me, every Friday, even we have prophetic ministry on the san uh, in the sanctuary. Uh, so please, um, if you want ministry online, I, I just a quick repeat for pro what Prophet Catherine said. Please, you can go to lifecenter.org. If you click on menu, go to Presbytery, and then um, click on contact us. There's a form that you can fill out and send us your information for those of you online who need that. All right, so we're about to go into the next part of our service, so we're going to pray and dismiss, and then after we pray, uh, Lisa James is going to come up, and she'll give you all your assignments. But remember, those individuals online, please come back to Facebook.live. We're not finished. Um, you may give us a five- or ten-minute break, and then come back. You, you know, So please, uh, don't leave us yet. And those individuals who are online who have... Uh, your link for your virtual assignment. Um, I think it's at 930 or so. Um, please um, be on time. It's going to be a blessing. All right, so let's pray. So, Father, we thank you, God, for this day. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you, God, that you have given us a hope and expected in, Lord God. We thank you for your call and your purpose. Father God, I bless 
and I seal, Lord God, what you have spoken and what you have done by the blood just stripes of Jesus. Father God, I pray the blessing upon everyone on this line and everyone in here. Father God, we declare right now that everyone is yours, that the enemy cannot steal them, hold them back, or stop them, but that, Father God, that they are anointed, they are appointed, and they are encouraged and strengthened. They shall walk in victory. Father God, I pray your protection over everyone in the name of Jesus as we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen.